Today, I have this really cool setup going on, connecting my iPad to the TV here, so I can show you guys some really cool stuff. I was putting this together for a lecture that I'm giving soon, and I thought I'd share it here with you guys as well, because it's something that I see people getting wrong all the time. And this is the difference between getting a great result with your training and winding up getting no results, or maybe even a negative result. So today I'm going to show you guys why you should avoid doing things like placing a band around your knees on exercises like thrusts and squats and why a lot of those banded exercises like lateral walks and clamshells that you see people doing are actually not that great for the glutes either. I'll also show you guys how to use all this cool anatomical stuff to understand what the best exercises are and how to set them up appropriately to get the most out of your training. As always, you'll find timestamps and a sectioned out progress bar below, so you can jump around to wherever you like in this video to rewatch whatever you want. Now, we're going to be talking about the glutes today, but this also applies to all muscle groups. So to help make it a bit simpler to understand everything to begin with, we're gonna start with a more basic example. So we're gonna come up, if I can get this working properly, and around to the biceps muscle. So, how do we do this? Elbow flexion, there we go. So, all muscles really do is they pull bones towards each other. They have an anchor point to one bone up here that we call the origin, and they attach it to another bone that we'll call down here the insertion. And they squish up, or they, as we can see in the video here, they shorten in length. And in doing so, they cause motion to occur. They do this action of squishing or shortening in the direction that the fibers run in. So as you can see in this very simple biceps example, the bicep shortens in this vertical plane and as a result they pull your forearm bone up in that vertical plane as well. And that's what we call elbow flexion or bending the elbow or if you're holding a weight in your hand, curling up a weight. Now, it makes perfect sense then why when we have a dumbbell in our hands, doing a curl in this direction would pl place a lot of tension on the biceps because a line of force of the dumbbell is going to travel straight up and down, i.e. if I drop the dumbbell, it'll fall straight down. And that's in alignment with the direction of the fibers of the biceps. So that'll work effectively to bend the elbow and move the weights. We can also see why if I took the same dumbbell and instead of curling right here by my side, I curled up out here on my side instead, that makes no sense whatsoever because the weight is still exerting force vertically straight down, but my biceps fibers are curling in this horizontal direction. So they're not really being exposed to much, if any, of the force demands from the dumbbell whatsoever. Now, finally, we can also see why if I had a weight in my hand here, but instead of curling straight up and down, I was doing some kind of weird, maybe like rotational thing instead, there'd be very little happening at the biceps. There might be a slight distortion in the fibers, maybe laterally, due to how the fibers cross over the joints here. But really, you guys can see how if I'm doing this weird rotational, circular, back and forth, horizontal motion, there's not much going on at all. So this gives us clues as to how we should be setting up and performing exercises and choosing the right implements as well. If you wanted to use more of this arm out to the side position here for whatever reason, you're probably better off using cables or some sort of machine setup or simply altering your body position if you had a dumbbell only. So hopefully this all makes a little bit of sense so far. Let's take a look now and come back and have a look at the glutes. If I can get this cool little model to work. Right there, glutes. So we can also look at some of the other muscles around the glutes, such as the glute medius, or we can go deeper. We can go there to like the, the piriformis, or even deeper than that and go into maybe the glute minimus, or some of these other deeper lateral rotators around the hip joints. But for all intents and purposes, when we typically hear people talking about the glutes from both an aesthetic and a performance perspective, it's usually going to be this big guy here, the glutes max. Now the glutes, like the lats and the chest, are a bit different to the biceps. 
because, as you can see, the fibres, they're not running in just one direction, like the biceps were. Instead, they follow some kind of weird rotational plane in always different directions, okay? Now, you can especially see that if we go around here, which is where we have these diagonal fibres. Now, when we look at the function of the glutes, the most common three functions that I talked about, which I mentioned here, are hip abduction, or bringing the leg out to the side, lateral rotation or external rotation, and hip extension. So this is why when you often hear about glute training, you hear people saying things like, hey, take a really wide stance, or spread the floor apart, or push outwards when you squat, or put bands around your knees when you're doing hip extension movements to increase the output of your glutes and get more glute gains. You've possibly also done a lot of this and felt your glutes working more. But the question is, is that really the case? And are these really the roles that the glutes play? And further to that point, what are the best positions and exercises for alignment to train the glute muscles? If we take a look at this from an anatomical perspective, let me zoom out again. I love this app. It is so, so, so cool. So if we look at this abduction role, we can clearly see how the fibres of the glutes aren't actually doing that much in the way of shortening and lengthening as the leg goes through abduction. There is some motion, let me zoom in a bit more for you guys, some kind of motion happening here of shortening maybe, especially if we zoom around here, you can see probably some of these fibers here, maybe they're doing something, but not that much. But what else is in good alignment for this motion? You can clearly see how the glute med here, that guy, he's in great alignment to be doing stuff. And the TFL, tap this, not that, the TFL is also in great alignment. And if we were to look deeper as well, you'd also see the glute minimus be uh, below the glute medius. It's also in a great leverage position to be doing a lot more. So what about external rotation or lateral rotation, which is, zoom reposition, this motion here. Pow. Or turning the knees out. Again, we, if we zoom in, we can see how the glute max isn't really doing that much whatsoever in this external rotation role. You can see, again, some kind of shortening happening, maybe depending how you look at this, you know, maybe a little bit, again, happening up there-ish. But more importantly, if we were to go back and we were to look a little bit deeper at the piriformis and all these other little muscles that sit around the hip joint and much deeper to the glutes. And we go to the motion here, lateral rotation, and we were to fade the glutes. You can clearly see, as we go through external rotation, that piriformis is in a much better position to be performing this external rotation or lateral rotation motion. So what does this mean so far? It means that even though you may feel something around your butt region when you do the hip abduction machine or when you do abduction-based exercises and externally rotate or drive your knees out or spread the floor and screw your feet into the floor and throw bands around your knees, all of that stuff that you're feeling isn't actually your glute max working more. It's all these other regions doing stuff instead. And if anything, all those actions are actually going to be the equivalent of us doing some kind of weird rotational movement to our arm here whilst curling. It may start to disrupt our ability to curl properly. Or in the case of the glutes, it can all get in the way of our glute max's main function, which is hip extension. So let's back up again and have a look at that role for the glutes before we move on. So glutes, motion, extension. Around there. So that there, hip extension. Now, as you can see, compared to the other roles, there are a lot more of these glute fibers here, let me zoom on in, that are clearly shortening. They're doing a lot more stuff. They're creating this motion to occur at the hip joints. But you might also see that maybe it's still not perfect. Like what's happening around here to these fibers, maybe not so much. Like maybe there needs to be some kind of a vertical motion happening. So why is it not perfect? It's because the setup of the leg is possibly off. 
The image here only shows the leg moving from its anatomical position straight back into extension, which is having the leg directly underneath your body. The glutes can do something here, clearly, but we can also see that maybe the hamstrings here with their vertical lines and maybe even the, the adductors there with their vertical lines are maybe in better positions to work. And if we're able to see above the pelvis, we'd also see how the erectors or the lower back region would also want to extend further as it's in good alignment for that motion to occur. Now we can start to draw some conclusions of what may be better positions for hip extension to occur for the glutes if we just follow the direction of these fibers and their roles. So if we took a slightly externally rotated leg and a slightly abducted leg position, this will then set up those glute fibers to be in a better position to do their main role, which is hip extension. If we compare the two motions of hip extension in the two different leg positions, we can see how by doing this with that rotated leg position, we get much more shortening occurring at the glutes as opposed to having the legs straight down beneath you. You can try this out yourself without any weight whatsoever. Perform this kickback motion with your leg directly underneath you in alignment with your other leg and you'll feel how you have some sort of glute contraction there. But you also feel your back wanting to extend a great deal more. Now, if you brought your leg into that slightly externally rotated and abducted position, you'll feel straight away that when you raise your leg back, it naturally wanted to raise outward slightly in more of an arc that is more conducive for the glutes. And you'll get less through your spine or your hamstrings. And this is what matters the most when it comes to training the muscle. Set it up in a position where it's able to do the most work by being in the best leverage position to shorten and produce force. So when we look at the roles that muscles play from an anatomy text perspective, we have to remember that these actions aren't all created equal. They can give us clues as to the plane of motion and the positions that we should be putting our body into to be able to work the muscle, but they aren't all exclusively what we should be trying to do in order to work that muscle. We shouldn't train or even think about external rotation or abduction when we're looking at training the glute max. They help us understand the relative position to put our femur or leg into, but that's about it. If we try to perform abduction or external rotation at the same time as performing hip extension by banding our knees, what winds up happening is we wind up fighting against ourselves. The glute max wants to perform motion in one particular plane, but other muscles like the piriformis or the TFL or glute med are actively pulling it out of its ideal plane when we try to perform external rotation or abduction at the exact same time. It's inefficient and can create a lot of issues down the road. I'm gonna say that again because I think it's really, really, really important. When you perform abduction or external rotation at the same time as extension to the hip joints, such as when you throw a band around your legs when squatting or thrusting, you are fighting against yourself. Your glute max wants to perform motion in one plane that aligns it up with its fibers nicely. Whilst your piriformis, your glute med, your TFL, and all these other muscles around the hip joints, they're all actively being called upon to pull your leg out of that alignment for your glute max. So this tells us why so many people can be doing what seems to be correct, but not getting any results, or even getting negative results with injuries and less development to their glutes long term. Now, before we get into the best exercises for glutes, I do wanna take a quick moment to shamelessly plug my new high-frequency glute program that is now available on my training and educational platform, Gamba Roo Method. That's 12 weeks of full programming for both home and commercial gym setups, where I'll take you through how to set up and perform all the exercises and workouts that you need to completely transform your lower body. You'll also get full access to all my other programs for all levels from beginners all the way up to advanced and all of my educational content to help you take charge of your body and health. Head to the link in the description box below or up here in the corner somewhere for a free trial to check it all out. All right, so back on track. What are the best exercises for glutes? If the main role of the glutes max is hip extension, we want to use exercises that take us into the greatest degrees of hip flexion and extension to train this motion and that line up appropriately to allow the glutes to work through this motion. Just like the biceps need to go through elbow flexion and extension in good alignment to be able to work effectively, this is where you wanna look at all the standard stuff that you guys probably already know about. Looking at deadlifts, squats, 
lunges, hip thrusts, and kickbacks. But the most important thing that people are missing is how they're setting it up and how they're performing the exercises. Let's take a look at a really common exercise that people use for glutes, which is the sumo deadlifts. First of all, sumo deadlifts decrease the range of motion overall relative to the conventional deadlift or a Romanian deadlift to allow you to lift more weight for powerlifting purposes. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into that in this video or it'll become a super, super, super long video that most of you won't stick around all the way through for, which will ruin my YouTube algorithm ratings and you won't get any practical takeaways. So we won't do that. But to stay on track, more specifically for glutes, sumos put you into this extremely abducted and externally rotated position, which we've already seen puts the glutes out of their ideal alignment and away from their best leverage position to work. So what will work instead? The adductors to perform hip extension and the quads to perform knee extension. It doesn't mean sumos are a bad exercise, it just means that they're probably not doing what people think they're doing and that there are better options out there like conventional or Romanian deadlifts where you'll be able to put in just as much effort into the exercise and get a more targeted response in your glutes. So the question is, why do we feel the glutes so much when we're doing it? What we're probably feeling there isn't actually the glute max, but more so again, those deeper glute muscles like the piriformis or other stuff altogether. We can't always rely on sensation to guide exercise selection choices because the sensation that we receive is not always indicative of tension being placed where we want it. So again, it's not about a magical exercise for the glutes. You already know what exercises you need to be using. But what this should be telling you is how to set them up and how to perform the exercises appropriately to get the most out of your glutes or any other muscle group. With the anatomy in mind, the best stance to be taken for glutes will be slightly externally rotated and a slightly wider than hip width stance. But of course, everyone's going to be a little bit different due to our differences in structure and mobility. So you need to spend a little bit of time for yourself finding out what that position is for your leg that allows you to get decent alignment for your glutes and then recreate it with whatever exercise you want. A really simple tip that I can give you for this is to try to spend a moment doing that isolated glute kickback motion and determine for yourself where that angle is that feels best for you. Then use that angle as a rough guide to the end position of hip extension you want to try to get into with your squats or your deadlifts and your thrusts. There will be some variations to this between exercises, such as on single leg exercises, or depending on whether or not you want more of the glute medius as well, but that will cover your bases for most of your glute training and have a really positive impact on your training overall. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it all interesting and useful and helpful. As always, drop any questions and comments below, and I'll see you all next time.